There's no escape. The journey to a healthier society inevitably involves politics. My name is David Wood, and these words are the opening words from my new book, Transcending Politics. The problem, unfortunately, is that politics is broken. What's more, technology risks making matters worse, much worse. Eminent biologist Edward O. Wilson said it well in remarks at Harvard in 2009. The real problem of humanity is the following. We have Paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. And it is terrifically dangerous and is now approaching a point of crisis over all. And here's another complication. Power tends to corrupt, as we were warned by Lord Acton, the 19th century historian and politician. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. What is worrying is that never before have we humans held so much power in our hands. Science and technology have provided us with spectacular capabilities. However, it remains an open question whether these near-absolute powers will corrupt and destroy humanity disastrously or instead uplift humanity gloriously. Given the pace at which breakthrough change hurtles around the world nowadays, frequently with cascading unintended consequences, that question is also an urgent question. In these fast-moving times, how can we steer technology for our collective benefit? How can we decide which technology should be developed more quickly and which should instead be slowed down or even banned altogether? Can we leave this task to technologists to decide or to market forces, to ambitious entrepreneurs, to military generals, to media barons, to academics or to clergy? or to politicians? Ideally, these hard decisions should draw on the best insights of the entire human community. Ideally, society's regulatory and legal frameworks, which constrain how we all operate, will serve society as a whole rather than narrow cliques. Ideally, where there are conflicts of interest, these should be addressed and resolved rationally rather than by brute power or by hidden manipulation behind the scenes. As new technological possibilities arise and new products and services become possible, laws and standards that previously made good sense no longer make such good sense. As technological innovation becomes more pervasive, legal reform needs to accelerate. In some cases, frameworks need loosening, in others, tightening, in yet others, whole new concepts are required. But how will these changes be agreed and overseen? And how can we prevent powerful vested interests from defining and manipulating these regulatory and legal frameworks for their own narrow benefits? These are key tasks for 21st century politics. The bad news is that politics is failing at this task, due in part to incompetence and in part, frankly, to malice. Misconceived actions by out-of-touch politicians are derailing necessary reforms in these frameworks. Obstructive actions by self-serving politicians further hinder the reform process. Not for the first time in history, what is mediocre about humanity is obstructing what is potentially best about humanity. But broken politics isn't just getting in the way of vital civil improvement projects. That's only the start of the problems. Broken politics threatens, in addition, to distract society's attention, to sideline critical resources, to provoke divisions rather than unity, to inflame the disaffected into acts of gross sabotage, and in the worst case, to plunge nations into cataclysmic war with each other. In short, we ignore politics at our peril. But I didn't write my book to condemn politics. I wrote it to commend politics. Politics, done well, can be a powerful ally in the quest to elevate humanity to our true potential, as we can benefit from 21st century technology by attaining a sustainable, equitable abundance for all. 
The good news is that a better politics awaits us, beckoning us forward. It's up to us, to all of us, whether we recognize that call and take the required actions. Key to these actions will be to harness technology more wisely and more profoundly than before. I summarize all this by saying, politics is broken and technology risks making matters worse, but transhumanism can fix it comprehensively. Transhumanism is the philosophy that asserts that humanity can and should take advantage of technology to transcend the damaging limitations and drawbacks imposed by the current circumstances of human nature. As a result, humans will be able to transition individually and collectively towards a significantly higher stage of life, a life with much improved quality. In my book, Transcending Politics, I offer transhumanism as one of four pillars of what I call a techno-progressive roadmap to a comprehensively better future. The first of these pillars is technocracy, the use as far as possible of principles of independent rationality, empirical observation, scientific analysis, and expert review. These principles are far better methods than allegiance to party politics or to antiquated ideologies. The second pillar, transhumanism, is the pillar that sets the direction for policy, namely the direction of profound ongoing elevation of all round human health, human wisdom, human well-being and human freedom. The third pillar is democracy or, better put, super democracy. It's the active involvement of the entire population, both in decision making and in the full benefits of technology and transhumanism. The fourth pillar is urgency, exponential urgency. The accelerating pace of technological innovation threatens to hurl humanity within just a few short years into a bewildering no man's land between pitiful existential disaster and a magnificent sustainable abundance. We need to hasten our understanding of the possible trajectories ahead and equip ourselves to progress at full speed in the required direction. Together, these four pillars can transform politics from being a serious problem for humanity into a powerful, beneficial force. Fixing politics is the central challenge of our time. If we can fix politics, if we can transcend its messiness and ugliness and divisiveness to enable its true purpose, then we can enable profound positive progress in many other areas of life. But if politics remains broken, it could lead us to collective ruin. I cover all these topics in some detail over the 13 chapters in my book, Transcending Politics. You can find this book on Amazon. I hope you'll discover many really valuable insights in it. Please let me know. Thanks for listening.